Hi, my name is Alex and I'm reading slash travel video maker based here in Moscow city, Russia. Today I'm gonna tell you about my city. In a way I see it uh, and tell you about interesting places. But let me tell you a few words about my country first. Russia. Russia is the largest country in the world. It covers nearly twice the territory of Canada, the second largest. It extends across the whole of Northern Asia and the Eastern third of Europe, spanning 11 time zones and incorporating a great range of environments from deserts uh, to deep forests and the Arctic tundra. Russia contains Europe's longest river, the Volga, and its largest lake, Ladoga. Russia also is a home to the world's deepest lake, Baikal. The landscape is different and mesmerizing. Variety weather zones, tall mountains, boundless oceans and seas. The inhabitants of Russia are quite diverse. More are ethnic Russians, but there are also are more than 120 other ethnic groups speaking many languages. It's almost 200 ethnic groups and subgroups besides Russians. Therefore, there are a lot of different traditions. I live in Moscow and I would like to tell you specifically about this city. First stop is beautiful Red Square. The Red Square is undoubtedly one of Moscow's and Russia's most iconic landmarks. Uh, you have probably often seen it in films when it comes to Moscow, but still, it is a nice place to enjoy the views and city life. Red Square ranks first in the list of the most beautiful places in the city area. Red Square began life as a village then turned into a small town of wooden huts. Years later, the city has grown wooden huts was replaced by red brick which would not burn but only until 17th century. Then the ruler Fedor Alexeyevich gave a decree replace it with white rock. But again appearance of buildings on Red Square was replaced with red brick years later. If the weather is cold when you arrive in the city during winter, it's even better because there is something magical about decorations you will see before and after New Year holidays. In the heart of Red Square there is massive old-fashioned shopping center called Gum. The design and architecture is giving you a throwback in Soviet era, with its decorations and interior view. There are both grocery and luxury shops and even cinema. Uh, the Cathedral of Vasily the Blessed is an Orthodox church in the Red Square of Moscow. It was built in the middle of 16th century uh, by order from Ivan the Terrible and commemorates the capture of Kazan and Astrakhan. It was the city's tallest building until the completion of the Ivan the Great Bell Tower. The building now is a museum everyone can visit. Our second stop is the largest church in Moscow, the Cathedral of Christ the Savior. The cathedral is so huge, breathtaking and amazing, you can even see it from many points of the city. The cathedral stands out for its stone facade and white marble with four columns as well as its five golden domes, the highest of which reaches over 100 meters. There is one important detail in church appearance that gathers the attention every time you are nearby. A sculptures, to be more accurate, it's high reliefs. They are present differently. Some of them repeat historical and biblical stories. Uh, some of them shows keepers of faith, princes and rulers. 
On December 31, on the eve of the 2000th year anniversary of the Nativity of Christ, the gates of the Cathedral of Christ the Savior opened again after a long restoration. And now the temple receives visitors on both on holidays and on ordinary days. From the cathedral you can walk along the embankment and meet the Museum Museum in front of the entrance to the Gorky Park. Third stop is Gorky Park. Uh, the recently restored park is not only a landmark of this city but also a favorite recreation area for young people and people who already have a family. Also, after working in the office, many citizens go for a walk in the Gorky Park, if the office is nearby. Let me tell you more about activities in the park. The popular gathering place draws adults and children alike to its recreational offerings, which include gardens, cycling, infrastructure, museums, viewing point, cafes, beaches, park, open-air cinema, sports center, etc. There are another interesting entertainment. It's an open-air dance floors. There are actually several platforms. One situated near a main path in the park and you can learn or participate such dances as tango, zumba, Brazilian, Spanish or Irish. The second dance platform is situated near Andreevsky Bridge uh, and specialized on bachata, hustle and salsa dances. Usually all lessons if they are available is free and started at evenings, for example, at 5 or 7 pm. In winter the park turns into a winter wonderland, covering its surface with almost 20,000 square meters of artificial ice. Next stop is Tsaritsyna. Uh, Tsaritsyna is located uh, in the south of Moscow and includes an architectural complex of the late 18th century, greenhouses, historical landscape park with ponds and new park zones with a light dynamic fountain. The territory covers uh, 405 hectares. The palace complex created as a suburb residence of the Empress Catherine II. It was designed and built by the architect Vasily Bajenev. Uh, later the new uh, Grand Palace by Matvey Kazakov became the center of composition. The buildings were not completed. After the Empress' death, work stopped. Next stop is Kolomenskaya estate. Historical, architectural and natural landscape museum reserve is a cultural open-air museum complex comprised of four different historical sites. The most important site, the Kolomenskaya estate, was once the summer residence of Tsars as far back as the 14th century. The complex, which covers almost 300 hectares, is home to fairy tale wooden palaces. A tent roof stone church built in the 105,000s, a water tower, four towers, and structures and the 24th Room Museum of Wooden Architecture, which includes the restored dining room of Tsar Alexei I. Beautiful manufactured gardens, riverside picnic areas, and a massive collection of both artifacts and structures make this a great destination to help you see what medieval Russia looked like. English language tours 
are available, but you are also free to wander the grounds on your own. Next stop is Tretikov Gallery. The largest collection of Russian art in the world sits here with over 180,000 paintings, sculptures and religious art dating back to over a millennia ago. The gallery was built using beautiful red and white colors from classical Russian architecture and located near the Kremlin. A significant art pieces include the Vladimir Mother of God, a Byzantine icon of the Virgin and Child dating back to the 1100s, Andrei Rublev, the Trinity icon from the 15th century, and several of works by Elia Repin. And uh, also the most famous realist painter in Russia. Uh, next stop is the Pushkin State Museum of Fine Arts. It is located just 500 meters from the Cathedral of Christ the Savior. The Pushkin State Museum of Fine Arts is a museum complex that is currently in possession of one of the largest world art collections from ancient Egypt and Greece to our days. Uh, today the holdings of the museum contain around 700,000 artworks. In the main building exhibits painting, prints and drawings, sculpture, applied art, numismatics, archaeology, etc. The pride of the gallery consists of the paintings uh, by French Impressionist and Post-Impressionist and Masters of the early 20th century Claude Monet, Auguste Renoir, uh, Vincent van Gogh, André de Rain, and many others. Next stop is Moscow City. Moscow City is the city of skyscrapers in true New York City style. Dizzling skyscrapers with observation desks, futuristic hotels, panoramic restaurants or a modern shopping center are just some of the attractions of the city of business and entertainment. For those who want to visit something beyond the Red Square or Kremlin. Personally, it is a project that amazes me. Five of the buildings exceed 300 meters. I assure you that seeing these skyscrapers from below or getting to one of the observation desks uh, is really impressive. It is most convenient to get there by metro, so it is also possible to access the complex by car. Uh, there are many parking spots available, uh, or by bus and even by boat. But still best way to get there, get off at Vasilevskaya metro station. Next stop is a little different than the others. Ravesnik bar. Uh, Ravesnik uh, is not just a bar, it's a large community where peers gather not by age but by spirit. Here you can dance all night to pop music or enjoy uh, an exhibition of contemporary artists. Laugh when it's an open microphone or sing in karaoke so loudly that uh, it drowns out the crowd. Uh, and the coolest thing is that you always know uh, that you will meet unusual, funny, uh, smart, uh, just uh, and cool people here with whom you will definitely have a great time. Uh, there are another unusual place a lot of citizens like to attend. Uh, it's a Strugina lake and rivers nearby. The place is unique in Moscow as you can choose a relaxing holiday on the beach um, and uh, also sports on the water. There are several types of sport activities uh, that you can choose. Uh, first one is windsurfing. There are instructors if you are trying to do it for the first time. Uh, as uh, you can go subboarding or sail on a yacht. There is also a cafe and one club that you can visit. 
uh, and I hope you'll get a chance to travel on uh, one or few spots I mentioned. So, goodbye.